Hey everyone, Bug Whisper here, Mark Abent, here to bring you Bug Smashers 2 The Lost World. Bug Smashers! Hey everyone, we have a little fun bug today. Um, I'll start off with a little fun change list here that will set us up. So, a little bit ago, actually last week, we had a issue with our items um, not getting physicalized when they detach from our item ports. Item ports are basically anything that will attach to the ship or other items, like a missile attaching to a rack and a missile rack attaching to a ship. There was a lot of major code changed in this build, um, which basically destroyed all that physicalization stuff. And this was just a basic quick attempt to get it up and running by good old Paul. Worked for the most part, except it had some knockoff consequences in multiplayer. Uh, see, the problem is we have an attachment code, an attachment system code, and a physics entity proxy code, which both of them handle the physical entity of our uh, missile or item. And in single player, it's pretty easy to tell who gets ownership, but in multiplayer, due to packets coming in and out at any time and ordering issues, the ownership of the physics could be on the attachment system instead of the um, item port system, or even the, or, I'm sorry, the proxy. And that will cause problems when the item expects it to be here and the ordering of those things is very delicate. So what uh, good old Paul has done, if we look at the difference, um, he basically, whoop, let's skip all that little fun bit and we'll go to, here we go. So anytime we get an item port, we will disable physics and anytime we leave an item port, we will enable physics. The problem with that is we may get serialized, the item will serialize and tell it to physicalize prior to being on the item port or vice versa and it causes some fun uh, physics crashes. So what I have done, if I undo all my fun little code, do do do. So I have introduced something called a desired physics. So it will still go through the same way. It will be like, hey, I want to sync this and physicalize this. We're going to now do a frame delay so that we won't have these um, issues where if I get attached and detached on the same frame and it serializes, all of these physics weird states go funky. So now it's gonna wait until the next frame to figure if all that should happen. And for all intents and purposes, that worked out except in voila, multiplayer. The reason why is, let's compile this, and I could do a fun little live demonstration. So I took off the first breakpoint because I forget this is a valid state, but this is um, where the problem lies. So we put in that frame delay problem is the physics proxy doesn't exist yet so when it tries to serialize this information it can't because we have a null pointer so it says hey abort and unfortunately this causes the player to disconnect can't have this happen so what we need to do is make sure that luckily in our physics proxy we have another parameter which will allow us to create the proxy and it's, this is the only because we have a frame delay. Um, before, whenever we serialize this information, it would immediately create the physics. But now, since we have that slight delay, we have to create the physics in the serialize just so that we could um, serialize the type. And there is a chance that the physics has not been created yet. That's what this um, garbage snapshot, which also the proxy takes care of where it will basically dump that information in until it's ready to um, take it when it physicalizes. So let's try this again. So as this loads up, uh, one thing to note is since the attachment manager and the entity proxy, or entity physics proxy, 
both handle physics, it always becomes a weird thing to try to make sure that both of them don't mess each other up. We do have something in the pipeline to basically make sure that um, both the physics in that is handled by the physics proxy and not the attachment manager. However, that is a huge, big change that is still ongoing and will eventually come out. But in the meantime, we have to do this little um, bit of shenanigans to make sure that we have the proper gameplay. Because we want our missiles to you know, actually move in multiplayer until we're able to get that other huge change out of the way. So as you can see, I was able to join. And if I have another character, I'd be able to shoot missiles at them. So we're going to fly a little bit. Whee! But there you have it. Fun physics woes. Whee! All right, everyone. So that little bug was a fun one. Um, we're doing a lot of major changes in the engine. And unfortunately, when we start taking off the branches for the next release, we have some broken stuff that we have to fix up. Uh, the whole physics issue thing when we detached from a port was due to a huge overhaul with the item port system. And since we needed a fix for the next release, we just put in this little thing just as a way to say, hey, we need to get this working. We are working on a proper fix, but of course that stuff takes time. And with that out of the way, let's get on to some questions. All right, so first question comes from Ardent Hammer. I don't know, I'm bad with names. Hopefully I got it right. Uh, he says, nice video, keep it up, cheers. Uh, I've always wondered, with large projects such as Star Citizen, how do you manage to keep track of such a large code base? So that is actually a really challenging uh, thing that we have to do day to day. Um, we do it a couple ways. Uh, one, we have a lot of tools in Visual Studio, such as Visual Assist, which allows us to basically search the code base for things that we really need. Um, the other one is our structure of how we keep things together. Um, core engine things go in core engine, core animation go to animation folder, rendering goes in rendering, gameplay goes into the gameplay section. Uh, that helps us narrow it down. And then we also have like uh, mandatory code reviews anytime we want to submit stuff. And we have ownership of people or ownership where some people own a particular section of the game. So if you have questions, you go to that person. And we also have a wiki. There's all sorts of things, even Skype emails just to find uh, anything or fix things. It's a huge, huge undertaking, and we use all sorts of fun little gadgets. I have another question here from Frazzy Boy. Uh, he has a question on event handling. He wants to know, basically, it's a nice little worded thing. Uh, I will summarize it. He wants to know why you would use event handling rather than checking if the player was dead or yeah. Let me restart that. So I got another question here from uh, Frazzy Boy. It's a little bit wordy, so I'll try to narrow it down. He basically wants to know why you would use event handling over, say, checking a value every frame. Well, checking a value every frame could be expensive. Um, also, you may have to have a, a store, like a pointer or a value that, of that thing you want to check. Um, it could be cost worthy, could not be, it just depends what you're doing. Uh, the benefit of an event handling system is, well, when that event happens, you know immediately and you can handle that state rather than checking every time to see if that state has changed, um, storing what the old state was, what the new state was. It could get a little bit uh, messy, but it always depends what you're trying to do. Uh, sometimes event handling might be better than just checking updates or vice versa. Again, just what you're trying to do to solve the problem. Uh, event handling is great for a large system as this because, for example, when a radar has updated its signature, I could send an event to all the systems and then it would update rather than them constantly checking, checking, and checking, and checking, which could lead to expensive um, frame times because they're all doing their own update function rather than just sending out a push then a pull. So hope you had some fun little answers there. And if you guys have any more questions, I'll answer them next time. Cheers. I had no idea how to end that.